Hey there, my name is Julie Fafan Balzer and I am a painter, a printmaker, and a collage artist living and working outside of Boston and welcome to my studio. So this is the painting that I was struggling with so much last week and it came together, which is always exciting to see. I think it's hard to have faith uh, you know that it's all gonna work out, but I'm really pleased with how this one turned out I've tried it in a couple different orientations and I'm currently feeling like this is how it wants to be I'll show you some little mock-ups that I did of it in various rooms and you can see you know I've twisted I've turned it uh, I've tried pairing it, but I think it's graphic. It's interesting It is representational, but still has a lot of abstract qualities, which is something that I like a lot um, it can be very hard to keep going when you feel like things are just falling apart. It can also make you lose confidence. It can also, also, also like it just all adds up, right? But I think the concept or the idea, the notion that you want to hold tight to is that it's not done until you're happy with it. There is a solution, but sometimes you have to think differently. Like I didn't imagine a really large flower on this canvas at all. That was never part of the plan. But what happened is, now I'm gonna sound like a crazy person that I talk to inanimate objects, but see if you can stay with me for this. We're gonna talk about talking to your work and having it talk back to you. So this element and this element were in the painting and that's actually what inspired me to add this large flower into it because I thought you know what those things already exist let's play a little bit with that and that's really what I mean about your painting starting to talk to you so this is a small sketchbook or journal whatever you want to talk about and it's it's part way done you know with just some doodles and stuff but um what is in here is like, this is just collage and drawing that happens to be in here. This is just a bunch of collage. This is just a bunch of collage. This is a real bunch of collage. And what I do, I have actually several of these books. Here's another one that just has stuff. Like when I'm cleaning up my table, I just throw some collage in here or, you know, just scribble a little whatever it may be and then when the time comes I can work on one of these pages this is a shape you saw it in my big painting that keeps coming back for me over and over um, I can work on this and I can think about how it can talk to me and this also really helps me um, gain confidence in knowing that I can pull stuff together because I've experimented with it so many times so Let's look at this and I can say, hey, what here is talking to me? What here is it saying that it wants to be or it wants to do or what's interesting? I find this shape kind of interesting, this blurry shape. Um, I find some of this kind of stuff interesting. So maybe I'll make this a page about flowers and draw a couple flowers in here. I mean, it can be that simple or it can be, you know, a longer, more esoteric process where you're like, oh, you know what? this empty space. I want to fill it with something and I want to, you know, fill every nook and cranny, which is kind of what I ended up doing here where I, you know, instructed a grid on top of stuff or, um, you know, here again, where there's kind of a grid of circles. Sometimes they end up being pictures of things. Sometimes, you know, it's slightly abstracted pictures of things. This is just a place where you let yourself be you without any pressure to make it good. Like most of the stuff in this book is terrible and that's okay. It's experimentation is the name of the game. So let me see what I can make happen with this. So I like to put deli paper under the edges of my book to protect it, the other pages from getting too much stuff on them. And then I like to use sort of whatever is at hand. It could be a pencil to draw some stripes. It could be some stamps and ink that got left over on my table overnight from a different project, you know, and in this way, even though this collage paper um, was collaged on here, gosh, maybe a year or two ago, 
in some ways then it still corresponds to the work I'm doing now because it's using the materials that are left over on my desk that I'm working with right this second. So this could be enough for a day of work. This could be enough. And I could say, listen, you know, it, this page said to me, fill my empty spaces and I did it. So I'm done. And I could come back to it later and add something. Or I could keep going. And in this way, I like that it's really flexible. So maybe we'll be done with this page because as soon as it stops speaking to me, I walk away. I don't feel the need to push it or force it. Like this doesn't talk to me anymore. So it just wanted me to add some stripes and some stuff. You know, let's see if this page or this page, this page is kind of interesting because it really has nothing going on in some ways. Like there's just sort of a stripe across the middle. Maybe if I turn it, sometimes I find turning things really helpful. Let's turn this into a funky vase with some kind of cool flower coming out of it. So I'm gonna use one of my favorite paints. This is Golden So Flat. And So Flat is a paint that is designed to be completely matte and really give you a flat finish. It's generally almost all the colors are pretty opaque, which I really appreciate. And you saw me shaking it because you do have to mix it. You really should use a stick to mix it, but I'm lazy and I just shake the jar. But it's perfect for anything in a book because matte paint is the key to keeping your pages from sticking together. And also for this kind of redacted painting, it's perfect because it's fairly opaque. I think I will have to do a second coat because some of the collage is a little bit dark. So I don't just make art and move on. I spend a lot of time analyzing it. This is again like the talking back to me thing. So one of the things that I'm looking at as I'm painting this and I'm thinking about is that I probably could have made that leaf more interesting, like a more interesting shape, given that there are so few elements that are making up this piece. And that's just a note that I can write down or it just can go into my brain for later use. But you constantly want to be thinking about what your artwork is saying to you and how it's talking to you. Okay, so like I said, it's not necessarily great art, but you know, I played with some things and I made nothing into something and I can make some notes for myself about things I do differently next time, or I can leave it here and come back to it six months later and adjust it and change it, right? The point here is to play, to have some communication, some communication. That's right. I'm telling you to talk to your work. What is this piece trying to tell me that it wants me to do right now? This is all that it wanted me to do right now. I'm not sure it's done. It's possible that I will come back later and draw in some shapes into this yellow area. But you know what? It's done talking to me, so I'm done. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Let me know what kind of art things you're struggling with. I always love to hear that. You can check out all my classes at ballsdesigns.com. You can buy a wonderful piece of original art for yourself at juliebalzer.com.